Let's break down nine AI tools that you'll probably actually use. Now, one of the most frequent questions that I get asked is you talk about AI tools all the time, but do you actually use all these AI tools? How much do you actually integrate AI into your daily life? And that's what I wanna get into in this video. I wanna show you the actual tools that I use all of the time and that I think you'll probably use all of the time as well. And I'm gonna avoid the super cliche ones like ChatGPT, which I'm using here to generate a Chrome extension with JavaScript and mid journey, which I use all the time for YouTube thumbnails. Same with Leonardo. I use this one for thumbnails all of the time. But if you watch my channel, you're already pretty familiar with those. So I'm gonna talk about tools that aren't those. Starting with number one, which is Claude from Anthropic. Now this is similar to ChatGPT in that you chat with it, you can ask questions, you can get advice from it. But what I really, really love Claude for is for summarizing long content. And the reason for that is when you're using GPT-4, you have a context window of roughly 16,000 tokens, which comes out to about 12,000 words or so combined between the amount of text you can input and the amount of text it will give back to you. So if you try to plug in a really, really, really long document that's longer than say 12,000 words, it's not gonna work very well in chat GPT. However, Anthropic has a 100,000 token context window, which gets you roughly 75,000 words in and out. So when it comes to summarizing really long research papers or PDFs or online articles, nothing beats Claude. And here's a research paper I came across called Iterative Multi-Granular Image Editing Using Diffusion Models. And as you can see, it's a 15 page document with a lot of words, probably more words than what would fit into the chat GPT context window. So let's go ahead and download this PDF. If I jump back to Claude here, come to my folder where I download this PDF and just drag and drop it right here into Claude. I actually get this error that says you may may not upload files larger than 10 megabytes. That's not a big deal, because check this out. Let's go ahead and open the PDF here, and I'm going to Control A, and I'm just gonna select the entire PDF. So I have all of the text, and I'm gonna do a Control C or Command C on Mac to copy everything. Then if I come back over here to Claude, and I just Command V, paste that in, you can see it just pasted it as a text file. So I get the same result out of it. Now I can type something like, please summarize this research paper, give me bullet points and explain it in simple terms so that even non-techie people can understand it. Here's a simple summary of the key points from this research paper. The paper introduces a new problem setting called iterative multi-granular image editing that involves iteratively editing an image according to a sequence of instructions while controlling the spatial extent of each edit. So then it goes on to explain it here. Still a little more techie than I would have liked. Why should people care about this paper? Explain it like I'm five. And there we go. Here's an explanation of why this paper matters in simple terms. Imagine you're drawing a picture, you start with a blank page and want to draw a cat. First, you sketch the outline of the cat, it looks good. Now you wanna add a hat on the cat's head. You're able to erase just the head part and draw the hat without messing up the rest of the cat you already drew. Then you decide to also give the cat a balloon in its head. You can erase just the hand part and add to the balloon. This is like iterative and multi-granular editing. And it goes on to explain it in the simplest of terms. So now I have that analogy, that sort of better explanation that simplifies what this paper actually does. Claude is amazing for this. Claude can do a lot more. This is mostly what I use it for, is for summarization of long articles. But you can do a lot of similar stuff with this that you can do with ChatGPT. And as of right now, it's still 100% free to use. All right, so the second tool I wanna tell you about is the Perplexity Chrome extension. And this is an AI that lives right in your Chrome browser. You can see it up in my browser with this little black square with the nine dots in it. This is amazing because it lets you chat with whatever website you're currently on. And that's mostly what I use this one for. For example, this perplexity Chrome store here, if I was to click this button, change the focus here to this page, and say, what does this tool do? Explain it like I'm five, and let's go ahead and summarize it. It's gonna read this perplexity page here and say, perplexity is a tool that helps you learn new things while you browse the internet. It's like having a smart friend who can answer any question you have. You can ask perplexity a question and it will search the internet and give you a quick answer with sources. Or if you're on a page, perplexity can summarize it for you. It also has other features like asking follow-up questions and sharing answers with a link. And the best part is perplexity won't collect or use your data, so it's safe to use. And this is basically an explanation and the source is the page that I'm on right now. So it basically took what it says right here on the overview and reworded it to that explanation that we just got. But this tool is valuable on so many other websites. Let's say you're on a long blog post like The Great Online Game by Packy McCormick. Now this is a pretty long post. It's a great read. I could copy everything 
and paste it over into Anthropic's Claude like I just showed you, or I can click on the perplexity link up here, change the focus to this page and say, we summarize this article into a paragraph. The article titled The Great Online Game by Packy McCormick explores the idea that we are all playing a game online, whether we realize it or not. And it explains the article. And now with one paragraph, I can kind of get the gist of the article and decide whether or not I want to read the whole thing. It can also search entire sites. Let's say for instance, you're on this site called Future Tools, which by the way, has been getting some updates lately, like this new special offers feature. Let's say you need to find a very specific tool on the site. You can come up to perplexity plugin up here, make sure the focus is set on this domain so it searches the whole site. What are some AI tools I can use as a real estate agent? As a real estate agent, there are several AI tools that you can use to improve your business. Here are some of them. Smartbids.ai helps real estate agents maximize their conversion rates. StyleDod offers a range of services to enhance real estate listings. Architect Render, tool that aids individual designers, architects, and real estate agents in creating visually compelling content. Real Estate Assistant, AI tool helps securely manage and collaborate on projects. These are just a few examples. And of course, the source is all of the various future tools listings. So it searched the site, found the best responses. So the Perplexity Chrome extension, it's just a great tool to leverage AI when you're browsing the web and you wanna know more information about the specific page or the specific domain that you're on. You can essentially chat with that page or the entire domain. And the third tool that I think you'd actually use is the sponsor of today's video. It's a tool called Taplio. Over the last 10 plus years, I've actually made my living by focusing on building a personal brand. Taplio is a tool that gives you superpowers in building your personal brand by using AI. Now Taplio is really designed to help you build your personal brand over on LinkedIn by generating viral posts for you, by generating viral carousels and things like that. However, there's nothing that says you can't take some of the content that it helps you generate and pull it over to something like X or Facebook or Instagram as well. So check this out. They have a whole section over here with AI generators. And right now I'm on the generated for you page. It knows that I'm into artificial intelligence and talking about tech and AI. So when I logged in, it just had a bunch of posts already pre-written and ready for me. For example, artificial intelligence, a blessing or a threat. With technology's rapid advancements, we are entering the era where machine intelligence can surpass human intelligence. This accelerated growth in AI has sparked a fervent debate on whether it is a blessing or a threat to our future societies. And then it goes into more detail. I can either add it to a queue to be posted at a scheduled time, or I can click edit and post, use this as a rough draft here, tweak it a little bit and either post now or add it to my queue to post onto LinkedIn. And as you can see, it actually writes some pretty in-depth posts, but it also has some other cool AI features. I can click on the post generator here and tell it what I want it to write about. And if I don't know what I want it to write about, I can click suggest a topic and based on what the tool knows about me, it will think of some topics. And if you're wondering how the tool knows about me, if I come over here to my account settings on this page, you can see I gave it some keywords, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So it doesn't know about me on a creepy level. I actually inputted this information. So let's get back to this post generator here. I can have it suggest a topic for me and it suggested AI, the future overlord or humanity's best friend. Join the debate on the true implications of AI development. Nah, I don't like that one. Click next. Here's another one. Maybe I'm not a fan of that one. Click next. Here's another one. Will AI render human intelligence obsolete? Explore the controversial side of AI. All right, I like that one. Give me two variations of a post about it. Click generate and there we go. It wrote two pretty in-depth posts on that topic. Again, I can edit and post or add it to my queue. And again, you don't just have to post these on LinkedIn, just saying. I really think this hook generator is cool as well. What is your post about? Let's say seven ways AI will change the world. Click generate hooks. And it's gonna find some really interesting ways to grab attention without just saying, here's seven AIs that will change the world. And now it's shared some better ways to approach this exact topic. Ever wondered how AI will alter our world? It's not just robots. Dive into this post and you'll see how AI is about to radically change your life. Why wait? Keep reading. So it just hooks you in a little bit better than just seven ways AI will change the world. Are we ready for a reality where machines lead the way? It's closer than you think. Experience the world shaking shift of AI now. Step inside. And then I can click use this hook. If I come over to this little lightning bolt over here, I can click on use AI to improve or continue your post. And let's select expand post. And there we go. It wrote a longer post based on that hook. They've also got a really cool character carousel generator. And if you're a YouTuber like me, you can actually just grab a YouTube video. Let's just grab this latest AI news update video here. I'll copy the link address, jump over to Taplio, paste this in. 
Make sure we have YouTube selected here and generate a carousel. And there we go, it generated a carousel based on the content of that YouTube video. AI, this week's highlights. Tesla's AI investment, OpenAI's copyright debate, AI job impact poll. These are all news articles that I talked about in that video, GPT-4, enterprise version, AI in meetings. And then I can create a post from this and then have this carousel imported directly into my LinkedIn account. If you're on LinkedIn, Taplio also adds a whole bunch of cool features to your LinkedIn sidebar, like your follower count and your profile views. You can see your new followers over the last 30 days, your best posts, etc. And let's say you come across a interesting post that you wanna comment on, but you don't necessarily know what to say in the comments. I could click on comment here and you can see a little lightning bolt button. If I click on that, I could either add value, congratulate or say thank you. Go ahead and add value and it will generate a reply for me. You don't have to use the first reply. You can use it as a rough draft, but if you just need that inspiration of what do I say here, this is great for that. Totally agree, Jim. We've got our own stories and use them as stepping stones, not stumbling blocks. And I can go ahead and post that. So if you're trying to build a personal brand online, using tools like LinkedIn, Taplio is your go-to superpower for that. So thanks again to Taplio for sponsoring this video. You can find a link in the description. If you use that link, they're offering a seven day free trial where you can get in and use Taplio for seven days, try out all the cool AI features and you're good to go. So the fourth tool that I think you will actually use is this enhanced speech tool from Adobe, which is another free tool. And you can find it over at podcast.adobe.com slash enhance. Let's say you need to record some audio but you don't have a good mic. Maybe you only have a cell phone or even like your built-in camera's audio. Well, it's usually not the greatest audio. So let's say for example, I am recording some audio on my iPhone uh, and I don't have a mic and the iPhone's not right up next to my face. It's got a little bit of a distance between it. So it's probably not gonna be the best sounding audio. I could take that audio file that I recorded on my phone, drag and drop it into enhanced speech. And this tool will use AI to clean up what this speech sounds like. Now, if I play it back, it should sound a little bit cleaner. So let's say for example, I am recording some audio on my iPhone uh, and I don't have a mic and the iPhone's not right up next to my face. It's got a little bit of a distance between it. So it's probably not gonna be the best sounding audio. So much, much cleaner. Now I can just go ahead and click download and I've got the enhanced version of the audio that I can use to sync over my video or whatever I needed to fix the audio for. Speaking of audio, number five, is Eleven Labs. Now, Adobe Speech Enhancer fixes audio that you've already recorded. Eleven Labs can create new audio that you haven't recorded yet. So if you want to turn written content into a podcast that sounds like your voice. If you recorded a whole video of dialogue, but you need to fix just one little chunk of that dialogue, you can actually type the fixed dialogue into 11 Labs, have 11 Labs speak it out in your voice, and then just replace the broken dialogue with the new fixed dialogue. And you can train your voice or anybody else's voice into it. So for instance, if you have a podcast where you interviewed somebody, you can train it on the voice of the person you interviewed. And if maybe they misspoke and you wanna clean it up for them, you can go in, train their voice and replace that clip. 11 Labs also has a free tier where you can create up to three custom voices and do up to 10,000 characters per month. And if you are ready to upgrade, it only costs five bucks a month and your first month is a buck. This is the plan I'm on. And for the most part, it's been enough so far. So here's the voice that's trained on me saying, hello, please subscribe to Matt Wolf. Hello, please subscribe to Matt Wolf. Now I didn't really totally like the way that sounded. So I can click on voice settings here. I can mess with the stability a little bit, mess with the clarity a little bit. It, generate again. Hello, please subscribe to Matt Wolf. And I can get different variations. If I switch this to 11 multilingual version two, this is their newest model. And I can even have some style exaggeration that I can change the scale of here. If I click on speaker boost, it actually slows down the generation a little bit, but should get closer to my actual voice. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. Hello, please subscribe to Matt Wolf. Tool number six, <laughs> Adobe Firefly. Adobe Firefly has all sorts of cool AI art features in it, but my favorite is this generative fill. This is also the same feature that's available inside of the Photoshop beta. But let's say you've got a stock image that's really close to what you want, but not quite right. Let's say for instance, I wanna use this newscaster image, but I want them to be holding a microphone. Well, I'm gonna purchase this image real quick. You can also generate an image with your favorite AI image generation tool, but I'm gonna do it with a stock photo just to see how it comes out. I'll pull this image into Adobe's 
generative fill here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this area of the hand and I'm just gonna type holding a microphone. And there you go, we got an image of him holding a microphone and some other variations of him holding a microphone as well. Let's go ahead and click keep. Maybe I want him wearing a top hat. Let's go ahead and erase this area up here. Do, 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 do. Wearing a top hat. None of those top hats are quite right. So let's go ahead and click more. That's a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and keep it. I don't know what's going on right here. So let's go ahead and click on remove. Select this little area right here, click remove and we just cleaned that up. We can also change things that are already there. So let's go ahead and select the tie here, pink tie, click generate. And now our newscaster is wearing a pink tie and then download my new version of the image. Here's our original image, here's our new image. Pretty handy for making some tweaks to a photo real quick. Tool number seven is a tool called Feedly Leo and this is a tool that I personally use every single day. Now it is a premium feature of Feedly, so it is not available for free, but if you like to do a lot of research and stay in the know with things, this in my opinion is a must have for whatever niche or industry you're in. Basically what this Feedly Leo tool does is it watches for areas of interest on blogs, YouTube, Twitter, news websites, TechCrunch, etc., and then it automatically filters the signal versus the noise for you and only shows you the articles it'll think you're interested in and will not not show you the ones it doesn't think you're interested in. And over time, you actually train it on what you want to see, so it gets better and better at just showing you the news and articles and blog posts and content that you actually want to see. So for example, here's my Feedly feed, and it's mostly AI content. The way I use it is I always scroll all the way down to the bottom, so I'm seeing the oldest information first, and sometimes it's not always perfect. So for example, I'm not interested in this gaming news about Baldur's Gate 3, so I can click this little arrow that says less like this. And now I just gave Feedly Leo some reinforcement that that this is an article that I'm not interested in, so show me less about gaming type stuff in the future. Here's another one about Final Fantasy. I'm gonna click the less like this button to better train it. And so over time, this feed just gets more and more and more dialed in to just the AI information I want. This is the secret weapon to how I stay on top of all of the AI news, all of the AI tools, all of the AI research that's going on is I have a finely tuned Feedly Leo account, which every day updates me with everything I would need to know in the AI space. Things like Google's Lookout app adds detailed AI powered image descriptions. That's new. Here's an article talking about how the co-founder of Google's AI division, DeepMind, says everybody will have their own AI powered chief of staff over the next five years. And these are coming from sites that I wouldn't normally read or subscribe to. Walmart goes all out on AI from a website called NRF Smart Brief. And to be quite honest, the day I'm recording this has been so far a pretty slow AI news day. So typically there's a lot more to show you, but that's just the nature of it. Some days are slower AI news days like today. But this is the tool that keeps me deeply in the loop of the AI and machine learning world. If you're curious about pricing on this one, I believe you need the Pro Plus plan. Pro Plan. You can see that's the one that comes with muting the noise with Feedly AI and the Feedly AI feed. So this is the plan that I'm on and that is required if you want to use the AI features. But if you're in an information business where you need to keep your finger on the pulse of whatever niche you're in, this is invaluable. The 12 bucks is a steal. All right, tool number eight that I think you'll actually use is called My Mind. And the best way to explain it is just to show you how it works on their website. So every time you find something you want to remember, you just save it to My Mind. Images that inspire you, your own private notes, products you like, articles, quotes and highlights, web clippings, and more. Their website has all sorts of use cases for it, for designers, for writers, for marketers, for developers. I mostly use it for the way they describe it for researchers, your private knowledge base. Researchers use Use my mind to collect data and find unexpected connections between bits of information from web clippings, PDFs to articles and research papers all in one place. This is really how I use it. So if I show you my mind here, you can see it's just filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles, GitHub repositories, news posts, YouTube videos, tweets, or ex posts, links to tools that I've come across, product demos, just everything that I come across on YouTube, X, Reddit, GitHub, or even articles and tutorials that I come across 
when looking through my Feedly Leo account. Whenever I come across something that I know I'm going to want to resurface in the future, I save it to my mind. And again, my mind is pretty dang full. There's tons and tons of stuff in here. Now, my mind uses AI behind the scenes to automatically tag the content for you. So for example, if I click on this video that I saved here, you can see it added mind tags of watch later, video, 3D web, software development, learn coding, SDK, creator, create coding. All of that was added via AI. I didn't add any of these tags. And what's cool is if I want to find information about a specific topic later, I can come up to search my mind and let's just do, for example, mid journey. It's going to bring up all of the various posts I've saved over time related to mid journey, whether it be X posts or YouTube videos or tools related to mid journey. It's all right here. So I can just sort through all of the information I've come across for mid journey. How do I use this in my workflow? Well, let's say I'm about to make a YouTube video about mid journey. I'm going to search mid journey, find out everything I've saved recently about mid journey and pull it together into a video about here's some of the coolest tutorials and techniques I've came across from mid journey recently. Recently. Or once or twice a month, I like to do a video about here's all of the coolest research that's in the works. I'll do a quick search for GitHub and look through all of the GitHub repositories that I've saved recently and talk about a lot of the stuff that's popping up there. Or if I just don't search anything, I actually created a tag that I add manually called the archive tag. So if I've already made a video about something, say for instance, this magic edit research, I could click on this and you can see I added an archive tag. Now, if I come up to the top of my mind, I created what's called a smart space called not archive. If I click on this, it shows me all of the stuff that I've added to my mind recently that's not archived. And you can see it's not a very long list. Everything else I've already made content about. So this is my way of going, what information have I saved to my mind recently that I haven't actually made a video about yet? And this is what's there right now. For me, this is the best way to organize stuff because I'm constantly coming across new posts on X. So I'm constantly coming across new YouTube YouTube videos, new articles, new GitHub repositories that I go, this is really interesting, but I'm on my cell phone on the toilet. What am I gonna do with this now? Well, I just save it to my mind. And when I get to my computer later, it gets surfaced on the My Mind app. Finally, number nine. This one's kind of a cheat because this is multiple tools in one. But the final tool that I wanted to talk about that I actually think you'll use on a pretty frequent basis is all of the cool AI features that they've built into Google Drive recently. So for example, if I'm in my Google Drive account and I create a new Google Sheet here, there's a new little box that opens up on the right hand side where I can say a daily workout routine that tracks sets and reps. Click create and it just created a quick spreadsheet for me. I can click insert and I've got a real basic template created already that tracks squats, bench press, deadlifts, pull-ups, and crunches. All things that I need to actually start doing again. Or another example, a daily meal planning template. And here we go, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two snacks. It even filled it in with some food items that I can use along with the ingredients and instructions. They've also built it into Google Docs. So if I create a brand new doc, you can see it puts this button here that says, help me write. An outline for a 10 chapter book about the history of AI. And there we go, it wrote the 10 chapters for me. Chapter one, the early years of AI. Chapter two, AI winter, the rise of deep learning, etc. And then I can even refine it further if I want. Change it from a formal to casual, summarize it, bulletize it, elaborate, shorten, or retry. Or something custom, like make it a poem. They've even added AI into Gmail now. So if I'm in my Gmail account, I could click on this help me write button down at the bottom. Thank this person for inviting me to lunch, but decline because I'm too busy. That's a little harsh, but I'll let the AI make me polite. So let's click create. Dear name, thank you for the invitation to lunch. I would love to catch up with you, but I'm currently swamped with work. I have a few deadlines coming up that I need to focus on, so I won't be able to make it. I hope you understand. Please let me know if you'd like to reschedule for another time. Perfect. That's much friendlier than, sorry, I'm too busy. So there you have it. There's the nine AI tools that I actually think if you started using them, you'd probably use them pretty frequently. Hopefully that answers the question of what are the actual use cases of some of these AI tools? What do you actually use these AI tools for on a daily basis? Well, you just saw the ones that I use almost every day, and I managed to exclude ChatGPT and MidJourney, sort of. I still talked about. But if you want to know about tons more AI tools, make sure you check out futuretools.io. I've actually been really hard at work upgrading this site and adding new features based on your feedback. So for example, I added a special offer feature here now where I'm encouraging tools that submit to the website to offer special discounts exclusively to Future Tools users. So if you come across a really cool AI tool and you want to know, is there a discount on it? You can come over to Future Tools, click on special offer and see if it's one of the tools that's listed that actually has a discount 
code on it. I also added a much requested added today button where you can click on this and see all of the most recently added tools that were added in the last 24 hours. And I've also added an FAQ so you can learn more about future tools and all the commonly asked questions. And as of right now, I'm in the process of building in a dark mode to be able to switch from light mode to dark mode on future tools, which is another most commonly requested feature. So again, if you haven't checked it out already, go to futuretools.io, check out all the latest tools, check out the latest AI news. It's updated on a daily basis. And if you're not already, subscribe to the free weekly newsletter where I'll keep you in the loop via email just once or twice a week with all of the latest news that you need to know. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you liked it, consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps me and helps the channel get seen by more people. And thanks once again to Taplio for sponsoring this video. I really, really appreciate you guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>